Okay, part two. Uh, there's the, the little jewel thief. Uh, that's a AAA battery, uh, an inductor that I scavenged from an old television set and wound uh, an extra primary on, 2N3055 transistor, and uh, the 90 volt neon that I showed you earlier, and a little rectifier diode there. And uh, this is an oscilloscope probe. Uh, 10x attenuation, and I have it right now. I just have it shorted together at the negative pole of the battery. Uh, and uh, this is the scope trace here. And since I'm showing just a single trace, I just put it right on this, right on the center radical marker there. Let's, let's see here. So right there, it's right exactly on that center radical marker now. And we're set at. Uh, 0.05 volts per division, so our 10x attenuating probe then will give us uh, half a volt per division on that. So there's where the baseline is. Now what I'm going to do is just measure the battery voltage by moving the probe tip to the other side of the battery like that. And uh, see that there? That's disconnected. And what you're seeing there is just some RF pickup from this other assembly that I've got running right now. But when I hook it up to the battery, that goes away, and you can see that the voltage trace goes up to uh, 1, 2, and uh, about 2 thirds full divisions at half a volt per division. So that's showing something a little bit under 1.5 volts for the battery. And there's no ripple or fluctuation on top of that unless I have a bad connection somewhere, like take it off. So I'm picking up this stuff now through stray RF. Okay. Anyway, let me go ahead and hook that on there solidly like that. Okay. So now we're seeing the half a volt, one volt, one, two, three, three and a half, almost 1.4 volts on there. And uh, let's take the Simpson digital multimeter here and see what it says about that battery. Same place. And it says, if I can get a connection, whoops, come on. You try doing this with one hand, it's not easy. Sorry about that. I was able to do this earlier. Oh, I see what's happened. The battery slipped off. Okay, so about 1.288, or just under 1.3 volts, and that's in agreement with what the scope says. Okay, one, two, three. Actually, it's very, very close to what the scope says. All right, and that's of course with the scope set at DC coupling. Now if I take this and move it to ground, you see that the scope comes back to the ground setting there. And if I move it to AC coupling, point pops up, but then as that capacitor charges, then the trace comes back down and it's back down at baseline, even though we've got the battery hooked up. Okay, so the AC coupling has filtered out the battery voltage from what's being displayed here. Go back to ground and then up to DC coupling again and there's our DC coupled trace okay right at the battery voltage now I'm going to turn the thing on there you go and you can see that the neon is glowing brilliantly with just one electrode glowing so we're seeing pulsating DC there right and I you might be able to hear it I can hear it and then there's our scope trace okay remember our baseline is down here there, I'll switch to ground, and there's our baseline. So here we have some kind of a signal going on around the battery voltage, right? The battery voltage is 1.3 volts, which is right up about there. So we're seeing the voltage drop down and then come back up and drop down and come back up. This is not AC because it's all positive voltage, right? But it's a fluctuating voltage. Now watch what happens to that signal when I switch it 
to the AC coupling setting. There's the ground, there's AC coupled. And you can see what happens. It fluctuates, but then as the capacitor charges, it puts the average of that signal right exactly on the zero marker that you get when you ground the signal. Ground, AC coupled, ground, DC coupled with the battery voltage included in there. Okay, So if you're looking to make some kind of a power measurement, you need to know what the absolute values of that voltage is. Right? You can't just say, oh well, I'll look at it AC coupled, because this is removing that DC voltage and it's falsely giving you the idea that you have some negative voltage going on there because the signal dips below the zero baseline. The AC coupled ripply part of the signal has been moved down so that its average is now on your zero baseline. Ground DC coupled. So now you see the true voltage at that battery, the battery voltage and then the little oscillations on top of that. Okay, so that's the input side, right, of this little neon oscillator. So what about the output side? Well, let's see if I can do this without breaking something. Alright, so let's hook our same probe. First I've got to change the attenuation because Remember that neon is is takes 90 volts to fire that thing off. So let's go to the five setting here, which with the 10x attenuated probe will give us 50 volts per division on that. Okay, now I'll hook it back up. And let's see if we can get the trigger back. So I've got the probe reversed on there. Actually, I should have uh, yeah, got the probe reversed, but that's not important. All right. So here we can see that. Let's see. There's the zero baseline again, right in the middle of the scope, and then DC coupled. We see zero baseline, a great big spike of 50, 100, 150, about 170 volts there, right? We're at 50 volts per division with a 10x attenuated probe. Okay, so that's 50, 100, 150, 170 volts. And then right there where that little knee is, knee, get it? Knee, change the time base a little so you can see it better. Where that little knee is, is 50, 60, 70, 80, and a little bit more than 80. Okay, so that's the neon cutoff voltage there. So you're actually seeing the neon firing, conducting a little bit, and then turning off, and then going back down to the zero baseline. Alright, and so there's an oscillating output voltage. So now what happens if I switch to the ground and then AC coupling? Well, you go ground, AC coupling. Doesn't really look like much has changed, does it? Let me go to the faster time base again. All right. Well, that's because, remember what it does, is it takes the average of this signal and moves it down to the baseline. Well, most of the average of that signal is already down near the baseline. If I look at it, at a, at a, let's go back to DC coupling and change to a greater amplification. All right, take the chance of burning out my attenuators. All right, now when we go to ground DC coupling, you can see that it in fact drops down. So the average of that signal, or rather AC coupling now, here we go, DC coupling, the baseline is right on the zero marker as it should be. Ground AC coupling, the signal has dropped down now so that the average of this signal is now on the zero baseline and you've lost the information about what the true voltages are because you've taken that signal 
and moved it down to where the average is now on your baseline. And because of the magnification here, at the setting where you see the full trace, 170 volts, you don't see that effect very much. I can just barely make it out. It's about one line width at this magnification. But as I showed you at the other magnifications, it's very clear and easy to see. Okay, there you have a Jewel Thief running on, well, when it's running, it's actually only about 0.84 volts. Lighting a neon bulb that takes 90 volts to light up with 170 volt peaks. And we've illustrated the use of AC and DC coupling and what they do uh, using this circuit and the trusty HP 180A oscilloscope. Thank you for watching.